Hello, I'm Henry T. Welcome to KZQ Channel 32, the show we call Be Inspired with Henry T. This is a show about inspiration many times over. New Mexico Sportscaster of the Year. Yeah, it's been, it's been a good ride, man. You know, like, that's been good to me. I'll, I'll tell you, the first day that I got elected Secretary of State, my group, the first thing we did was say a prayer right out the door. About people who have overcome great obstacles in life to achieve their dreams. No one's going to give me anything. It's not going to be handed to me on the platter, so anything I have to get, I have to earn it. Who have become role models for others. So when I grew up, I knew that there would be a time that I would have to give back to the community somehow. Those who've gone on to be the best they can be and to inspire. 16,000 people watched Jim Holzman and his Bulldogs win the state championship. This man has been the head coach at Albuquerque High for 22 years. Hello again, I'm Henry T and today I am motivated before we even get started. I'm inspired before I even come to the studio today because I knew in advance who was going to be here. Man, he's my brother in so many ways, shapes, and form. He's a big inspiration to me. The former coach of the Lobo soccer team, ski team, tennis team, and he's internationally famous. I mean, literally. He's an ambassador for all of the above and more. And maybe he's got some more coaching left him because he's one of the guys that's really destined for the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame and a whole lot more. Ladies and gentlemen, the ageless Coach Klaus Weber. Coach, Thank it you, takes Henry. forever to do your resume. <laughs> and you notice I didn't have to read it. I know. I know. And not only that, Henry, but, you know, it's now 44 or 45 years ago since we met on the famous mountaintop. Yeah. When, during the ages when we got, when we still had snow, remember? Yeah. And I skied <laughs> right through that? your legs. <laughs> and I don't know whether you're still hurting from that, but it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. And, you know, that's remarkable when you can be friends that long and be associated so closely in similar activities for that long. And that's why I cherish, ladies and gentlemen, our friendship, because we always see each other. And it's always like, what's Klaus up to today? You're remarkable and so helpful to thousands of people always. Thank you, Henry. And you know, the beautiful thing is that you maintained your interest, your perspective in sports. For me, it's a life lifelong interest, participation in sports and movement. Both things are equally important and they keep me motivated every day when I get up, when I bring wife to work, when I do my workouts, you know, when I go for practices. Everything that I do has its purpose yeah. and it makes life very, very rich. Yeah. Very, very... Uh, and you do things so thoroughly. You don't do it halfway. And you begin and you close. Mm -hmm. Those are qualities that are rare. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And when you really look at all the young people that went through some of the teams I coached, that were associated through school in one way or the other, all of them had or have established successful careers. Not all in sports, some in business, some in coaching, like Tommy Smith at San Diego Prep, Billy Dippo at, uh, at, Volcano, at Volcano Vista. There's a whole list of individuals that are highly interesting and also very successful. As with families, okay, in their community, in their school community, in their business community, and that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful road to follow. There are so many places I want to start today. But one always overshadows the other. Mm -hmm. But the one that's always constant with my buddy Klaus is where he grew up in Switzerland, his family. He describes his neighborhood in such a special way. He puts me there like a movie director and producer. What a fabulous environment you were always in as a kid. Let's go back there and bring out the inspirational qualities of your youth. You know, it was a playground. My whole neighborhood was a playground. 
We walked up two blocks and you were in the woods. You could start in the woods above my house and end up in Geneva in a continuous trail, which I actually did once I went wow. home visiting. And it's about uh, close to a 250 kilometer journey and you sleep in mountain huts or you sleep outside, but it's a beautiful area, smaller mountains, the Jurassic Mountains, and then you have the middle land in Switzerland, and then you have the front Alps and then the Alps. But on a good day, you can see from my house almost directly into the Alps. Wow. And what a sunset you can have. Beautiful. You know, absolutely marvelous and as kids we spent the whole day in the woods playing uh, you know cowboys and indians playing uh, <laughs> chase games uh, at the age of eight i formulated the first soccer team in my neighborhood no coaches no parents just us and we walked over the other side of the river which is called are and we played against a team on the other side of the river think about that at the age of eight and nine no referees no fancy goal posts oh that was a goal no that wasn't a goal okay you learn to negotiate with each other you learn to understand each other you get that appreciation of sports that's more than just winning just push it down their throats it's just <laughs> get along and appreciate what we call of course the beautiful game yeah but there are other beautiful games too you need to learn to appreciate movement in general. The honor system. And the honor system, but that's basketball, but that's football. You know, you have to have an appreciation for what people go through that perform out there, what their sacrifices are, even though now, you know, their takes are huge. But on the other hand, also, the way to get there, what they have to deny, what they have to sort of circumvent, not be involved in, study hard. So all the good characteristics, they're still with us, and that's important. Can you imagine playing all day in the woods, playing soccer all day? And I bet he was a great kid and extremely active. And then at the end of the day, the sun's going down and the way you described his beautiful mother and the way she kept the home and dad hard worker, I bet the dinner table was packed with delicious food. You've been so eloquent in that description I want to go back and eat a meal with you and your family. You should, yes. Unfortunately, there's very few of my family members left. You know, my dad passed away, my mom passed away, my oldest brother passed away, unfortunately. All very gifted, talented people. But I still remember in 44 when my dad was called upon to go down to the border between Switzerland and Germany because there was uh, a possible invasion from the German forces. And the day we said goodbye and he would have to be in service for four and five months. And I still see him in my young little eyes walking down the street to that pickup bus, and it was heart-wrenching. And of course, when he came back, it was a joy joyful, joyful experience too. Uh, that's one of the situations that stayed in my mind very clearly. I unfortunately got a very, very bad lung infection at one time, and I was in a hospital and doctors, it was like two years old, didn't give me a great chance. I had three uh, quarts of fluids in my lungs, and the doctors just said, you know, there's not much we can do. Uh, when we try to operate, the lungs may collapse. So eventually they needled out all the essential fluids, wow. and I survived. My mom said when I came out of the hospital, and I remember it vaguely, I couldn't walk at the age of two. I had to relearn how to, to walk again. But that gave me, I think, and that sort of uh, illustrated in some other cases, that gave me that incredible drive that led me to highly successful careers in soccer, in cross-country skiing, in long-distance running, you know, name it. And it gave me the motivation. And I think some of it physiological, some of it is internal uh, uh, internal uh, inspired yeah. uh, drive, uh, but it was a very, very dark time in my life. And I still see my family members sort of looking down the wow. crib and you know what, the reflections stay with you. You know what they tell you in their faces. Well, there's a lot of love. A lot of love, but also a lot of sadness. So it's a very but interesting... But that built inside you, the will to, to live. Yes. And the will was, to get over yep. it. You when, knew at that very tender young age oh yeah. Oh that yeah. you could beat when it. When I was six years old, 
in the morning. I got up an hour earlier than anybody in, in, in our house. And I told mom, I'm going to go for a run. Can you see a five-year-old going for a six-year-old going for wow. a run in the woods? My mom was hysterical. She said, no, you can't do that. Well, I ran out the, the house, <laughs> up to the woods, into the woods, and I got to know, you know, our area, our uh, wooded area, just like a footprint of mine. Wow. So, and when the nature boy was done, it was time to eat. <laughs> I bet the dinner table, the setting with oh, yeah. mom yeah. and dad there and the two brothers. Old school, it was Henry. A special Old time. school. You had to wait. Delicious food? Fantastic food. Come on. It was delicious, but it was all time. It was, we could sit there and nobody would move a hand until the head of the family, which at that time, of course, my dad, would sit down, say his prayer, and say, okay, it's eating time. And then we would all wow. dig in. And with three boys around the table, there was never, never any leftovers. <laughs> so that's, that's definite. And my mom knew how to cook. She how is, good was that? That alone, that scene, when you reflect on it, how does that help you even to this day when you think about family? Yeah. What does that mean, Well, it family? means you want to hold the family together. You want to be in touch with your children, even my three. There is not a, a week that we don't talk once or twice with each other. My oldest daughter in New York, she's a well-known photographer at this point. Wow. Does very, very well. My son is with uh, Abercrombie & Finch. He is a big regional uh, manager, and he works out of Las Vegas, also has his territory in Denver. So he is highly successful. And then, as I said, my youngest daughter is a year away from getting her PhD in physical therapy. So she is almost there. So And then now the oldest one is 42, then Josh is 31, and the youngest one is 27. Wow. And they all, I mean, as a family, we go on summer vacations together. They all come home for our uh, winter holidays, and we sure have great times. So yeah. it's, it is, it's a very well uh, activated and responding family. And Klaus Weber is one of the most versatile athletes that's ever come to the state of New Mexico. And he took it beyond his own athleticism. He was a scholar athlete and learned all the, the dynamics, all the intricacies, all the detail of what each sport was all about. Therefore, that's why we call him coach today, because he coached the Lobo soccer, the Lobo ski, and the Lobo tennis teams. Okay. He's still coaching today, and I'll tell you what, they even made a stadium with his name on it at Bosque School, Klaus Weber Championship Field. And when I see that sign, yeah. man, it puts tears in my eyes right. because I love your team. Yeah. I never actually coached tennis at the unit, but I was always a tennis player. Yeah. And I always loved the sport. My brother played for almost 20 years in the top division in tennis in Switzerland. Hey, so, we're at halftime. Halftime, very good. Very you know good. what halftime's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to the chalkboard, plan the second half, okay? Right, right. Make adjustments, you know all about that. We're going to do that with the exciting Klaus Weber when we come back. Don't miss the second half of this story. This is KZQ, yeah. Channel 32. Call him coach for many reasons, and you're gonna know why very quickly. Everybody knows you as coach. Everybody knows That's you right. as Coach Klaus Weber. Yes. But coach with an exclamation point. Coaching, you were you were born to coach. Accurate? Absolutely. When you take a team at the age of nine and travel with them or walk with them across your river to face another team on the other side of the river in my, in my hometown and with no adult influence, parental influence or, or referees, you really conduct games. You play, of course, too. Yeah. And I did the same thing in high school, 
you know, and I did the same thing gone on to my junior team of my uh, home club and rose to the ranks very quickly. Played at 16, 15 and a half, I played already in the first team. Probably the youngest player ever to make it up there at a very young age. But you knew early on you wanted to coach. I had confidence. I had confidence. It was my dream, you know, to be the leader of the troopers or to at least be a leader, let's put it that way. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that gives you in the military. We, of course, in Switzerland, you also have to surf in the military. And uh, I was in there for almost a year and a half. Then back onto the soccer fields, they used to give you time off to go and play when your team needed you. And uh, so it was all a good experience, which makes you tougher. When you landed in the state of New Mexico, right. suddenly your impact was immediate. We look over there, who's coaching soccer? Who is that guy? Man, he's got a lot of energy. Good looking guy, in shape, great athlete. It's Klaus Weber. You remember those days? I remember when I arrived in the US, on the US United States boat, ship, huge ship. Um, I got off, I had an old family friend waiting for me. They took me in for at least the first month, so I had a, a way to adjust a little bit. And the next day I got a phone call from uh, Juliana, that was a team associated with the uh, delicatessen market in, in New York. And they said, hey, we heard you arrived. Would you like to have a tryout? You know, we'll pick you up. And I said, sure. And so next morning, it was a Sunday, of course, that limousine came in front of the house with all the guys wow. sitting there with their little uh, black hats. <laughs> uh, you know what they're referring to. We drove out to Staten Island to play the other Italian team. My team then was called Giuliana. The other one was called Inter. And that, that was the team of uh, Staten Island. And there were about four to 5,000 people around the dirt field. Dirt field, not grass field, dirt field. And in the back of the car, was Eddie Gonzalez, and Eddie was a good friend, not became a good friend of mine, and he was from Colombia, the high, highest scorers in Colombia. And so we started to talk a little bit between a little French, a little bit English, and a little bit Spanish, right? We got on the field together, we both were on tryouts. He gives me two beautiful crosses, I put them in. I gave him two beautiful passes, he put them in. And all the people started to applaud us on that field. That's wow. a mem memorable moment in my life. Beautiful. And not only that, people told me afterwards that the, uh, the gambling amount around this field accrued to about half a million dollars. Wow. Can you believe that? So that was, uh, you know, two Italian teams. <laughs> We've got so much to move through. I want to move quickly to yes, yes. the possibility of soccer being cut at the University of New Mexico. Nothing's final, it's just you keep reading the possibilities and it yep. scares me with 30,000 kids playing soccer in New Mexico, yep. the success the Lobo soccer teams have had. Absolutely. Man, just that'll be process. rough on somebody if they ever cut soccer in New Mexico. Yep. I, what would be the reaction? It would be an outcry from the community. And you have a lot, as you probably read with the new franchise, with the new professional franchise, uh, the city is building or uh, some of the uh, yeah. major uh, partners are building. It would be even more a voice that would be heard in a very negative way when they would try to cut soccer. Uh, it's a little bit like skiing. When they cut skiing about a year, uh, it was reestablished. Soccer has an even more influential community that would really, really uh, make their voice heard. And I think there's no chance that soccer, men's soccer, is going to be cut. There are a few, uh, there may be a few things that play against it. It's the new conference they joined, USA yeah. uh, conference, that is a, a lot of traveling rather well, than to stay in the West, you know. I agree with you on that. Now, if the new USL franchise in Albuquerque said, Klaus, we need you, man. Come out of retirement. We need you to coach our new team. Well, you know. Would you be at least in any way tempted? I, I would like to be associated with the, with the whole franchise, but not as a head coach. I think you need to have young blood into the ranks of head coaching. People with experience, not people that never played the game. I just watched a video of all the big coaches right now in Europe. And 
uh, going to the World Cup, and you see him in their playing careers. They're all incredible professional players, right? We had a we had a head coach here that probably couldn't kick a ball very well, mm -hmm. and that's not Jurgen Klinsmann. Jurgen Klinsmann was a very accomplished soccer player, but but Bruce Arena, and even though he had some, even though he had some experiences and had some coaching experiences, but at that level, there comes a level where there, when it's not good enough, when you need to step up and get the best. Okay? All right. We, there's so many thousands of topics I would love to discuss with you. <laughs> the World Cup. <laughs> and here we go. See you, do you? Man, we know each other. You know, bread and butter. All right. Set up. Let's start with the exciting part. Who's going to play in the championship of the World's Cup? Yeah, that's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. You know, I just watched a lot of lead-up games the last week, last weekend, and I had Brazil fairly, fairly, not far down, but a bit further down. I have Argentina a little bit higher. I had Spain a little bit higher. I'm looking at France, but the United States just tied France the other day in Lyon, 1-1. Uh, good game. The, the young American team played really played good soccer against a a favorite team to at least be in the final four in the World Cup, France. Okay? So I'm looking at Germany because of the consistency. Even they also lost to Austria. But sometimes these pre World Cup games, you know, you have to take them with a with a so little bit of chase. salt. Choice in the championship. Germany, I say Germany is gonna be there. And then I had Argentina there before, but I would say it's gonna be Brazil. It could be a, a replay of how two, good is that of 2002. That oh, God. how exciting is the World it's Cup? My 18th World Cup that I remember back, Henry. 18 of them, and I can tell you scenes. I can tell you in some of them I attended, like the one in Switzerland with my dad. Great memories uh, as a teenager. We went up to Sweden to see Pelé's first goal against Wales. Wow. Uh, 62, of course, was Chile. You couldn't do that. Then they went to England, then back to uh, uh, Spain. And so it's, it just went, you know, it went from one World Cup to the other. You almost live for it. You live through the qualifiers, then you live through the tournament. See? Can my favorite player, Cristiano Ronaldo in Portugal, yeah. Can they sneak through there and upset so my favorite player is in the championship? You know, it's going to be very difficult. You know, they have, they make it out of the group. But what comes after is going to be very difficult for them. Uh, they have Spain in their group, which is going to be on, I think on Friday, Spain uh, plays Portugal. That is a huge clash when you think, you know, they're in Ireland yeah. playing against each other. That's going to be a huge game. For, for that matter, then a replay of the 1950 World Cup that my family and I listened to on the radio, Brazil is playing Switzerland. And the last game in, in Rio, Switzerland was behind 2-1. We listened to it on the radio, wow. voice going in, voice fading out, and suddenly all that commotion, voice comes back, Switzerland had scored 2-2. And I say there's a good chance that Switzerland could tie Brazil. Wow. Yep. Yep. Even though Brazil right now is playing very creative, very creative soccer. And Neymar is back top form. You know, we're talking all about Messi. How well do you know soccer at the international level to discuss with me, a rookie, the World Cup? How much does Klaus Weber know about the exciting game at that level? Just about. Endless. You know, it's I can I can talk World Cup for forever, forever, never, <laughs> nonstop, and memories come back and All prediction right. come. There, you know, uh, are generated, and I think that's the beauty of the World Cup because in soccer, as you know, you're never a hundred percent sure. You know, it could be oh. it could be Saudi Arabia beating Russia, a, a lucky goal, good defense could change a game. What a beautiful game! Yep. Oh my goodness. Now we go. Speaking about beautiful. We're going to end this exciting get-together with Klaus. We're going to talk about his beautiful wife, <laughs> how they met, who she is, and just your heart. Let your heart, how you feel about her, just shine across New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, and Arizona right now as you describe your wife. Yeah, she was, of course, a student of mine some 40 years ago, right? just when yeah. I met you. 
And we got closer and closer. We had good discussions. We had nice dinners. You know, we had uh, uh, some hikes, uh, some ski sessions. Uh, very active, very active woman, my wife. Uh, we still hike a lot. We still play some tennis together, and uh, just formulated into a nice relationship. And now married, 33 years. And, wow. Uh, Yep. As we show pictures on the screen right now of your beautiful wife, mm -hmm. what is the thing that really melts you about her? Oh, she was, you know, when I met her, she was incredibly, she still is, incredibly beautiful. But she maintained that. She has a very young structure, very young facial structure, very pleasant voice, uh, very supportive, uh, very positive with the kids. Great mom. You know, when you think... I was a coach, and you know how co much coach coaches do travel, right? Oh, yeah. So holding the family together, and then, yeah. of course, I knew when I came home what my duty was. You know, I had to take over. I had to make sure everything was smooth, everything worked well, and that's, you know, that's our communal relationship. We're going to take an extra minute to describe your wonderful marriage, because when I see you guys together... It's smiling. It's interaction. Yep. You know that you're a pair. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's great to see. Yep. Well, it's, it's dedication. You've got to dedicate a life to your partner, right? She dedicates the same to you. And then together, that energy has to go down or be focused on the kids. And, you know, when we see our kids home and we look at each other, that glare, that smile comes over wow. us that is that's i won't say the payoff but that's the reward let's put it that way right yeah. you look at the table and you look at their faces now they come of course with their boyfriends and with their girlfriends or whatever and you look at it and say wow you know what a beauty beautiful legacy and that is the most important thing henry it's a life cycle once you have them up once they're gone you can go it's, you know, even though you think you're still important, but so what? You did your major, major duty and responsibility of wow. your life. Who's your wife's favorite soccer player in the world today? Today, she probably would love Messi to win the World Cup because of his technique, because of his ability, of his versatility. I want to say, you know, Ronaldo is more straightforward guy. Messi is just unbelievable in terms of his versatility. We could battle, we could have a debate today. Oh, yeah. Because I think the greatest <laughs> passer in the game, the most beautiful, most accurate crosses in the game are created by Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo, the greatest passer in the game. You gonna battle me on that one? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a scale dipping and scale uh, comparison which one does when you look at some of Messi's impossible passes that he gets right in the foot of his teammates it's absolutely I give I you know I respect both of them I respect just about every international player that has been in the World Cup that has contributed to his country that takes joy and grace and and and, and commitment to the World Cup is that's just, to me that's fantastic we anyway. could go on forever but my director and our producer are saying, end it, Henry. End it. They, you're so interesting, they forget the time. <laughs> what a pleasure. God bless Henry, you. It's, it's my pleasure, let me tell you. Thank Our you. friendship has been very, very meaningful. And we're going to broadcast together soon. We won't tell you when, because we're working it out. But we will be a broadcast team someday. And ladies and gentlemen, we thank Klaus for being here today. Wonderful inspiration that he gave us today, right here on KZQ Channel 32. We'll see you again tomorrow morning, right here. You got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here, The Inspired with Henry T, 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.